Andrea Larini starting right at the back as we come down to Zangaria to go across the stripe to start this one. Mauro Cesare out in pole position alongside him, Gigi Ferrara. And right behind him, you see the two Audis with Gianni Morbidelli on the outside, Chris Offerson on the inside, Tony Oliuzzi. He's a little bit far back at the moment because I think that's Andrea Bacci who's just in front of him. Maybe he wants a long, long run at this, but the lights are still red. So he'll come across the stripe. He's up to Mauro Cesare to fire them across the line. And there he goes. But Luigi Ferraro has gone along with him as well. Now they start to spread out. But remember, it's going to be really tight for this first corner. Mauro Cesare stays in the lead. Then it's Ferrara. And then I think Tony Oliuzzi's got through. Oh, that's just what the Audis didn't want. Tony Oliuzzi's got through. So has Francesco Sini. And that holding back from Tony Oliuzzi is just what he did. What the, what the uh, Audis didn't want. It is Tony Oliuzzi. I'm, I'm sure of it. Can't be Bacci. I'm going to have a look because both the car racing cars are in the same colours. But I think, actually, look at this. It might be Bacci. It is Bacci. And I don't believe it, but the Audis have managed to keep Tony Oliucci behind him. It's Bacci who's got out in front. Tony Oliucci, very, very wide there. And I think one of the Romeo Ferraris, Mercedes, he's going to have a go at him and pass on the inside as well. Lots of locking up and braking. There is no corner there. Nobody's been able to take the corner. But that's Bacci out in front. And Gigi Ferrari in second place. Well, Mara Cesare in third. Then one of the Roma racing team behind them. It's not Roma Racing, sorry, Romeo Ferraris, and I think that's Raffaele Gianmaria behind him. So Ferrara, Cesare, Bacci, where's Sidney gone? Oh, it's Sidney, sorry, Sidney in front of Marachet. Oh, no! That's Nico Calderola, a big, a big hit there, and that's, that's unbelievable. Joan Christofferson has been taken out. Number 46, Joan Christofferson has been taken out of the race. He's not going to start on that. And if Tony Oliuzzi finishes this race, he will be the new champion. Nico Calderola, you couldn't do anything worse. That's the series leader, Johan Christofferson, into the wall. Christofferson, well, he's had a downcast face all year, but this will make him mad. Nico Calderola taking him out. And I think Andrea Bacci's got a little bit of a problem as well. Bacci out in front, but there's some serious smoke coming off of one of the tyres there. Safety car's out on the track, but it won't help Bacci because that tyre's not going to last the race. Sini is there in third. There's Liuzzi. Liuzzi only has to keep going and hopefully he doesn't have a component failure in that car. It's got to be bitter, bitter disappointment. Way wide and couldn't control the car, could Nico Calderola. And the person, the one person that nobody wanted to hit, Johan Christofferson, walks away absolutely. The word has been overused, but devastated with what's happened to his championship hopes. He's the Italian champion because the Italian championship runs alongside this. So he's got the Italian championship. He's the rookie champion, but he wanted the overall victory and he could have got the overall victory. But Liuzzi was the one who weathered the storm here and absolutely there was nothing that Christofferson could have done about that. Nico Calderola came out of nowhere onto the grass. Obviously on, on the grass, he couldn't break and the only person in front of him at the time was two cars in front, and that was poor old Johan Christofferson. And it's gonna take a little while to clear that away. You can see the lubricants and everything spread across the track. That's going to cost Nico Calderola dear at uh, AMG Coupe. There's a real traffic jam around here. Christofferson series couldn't have ended worse. There is not another race to go. We were supposed to be going to Indonesia to Sentinel, but the FIA haven't homologated that track for racing. Superstars, so we haven't been able to go there.
and my heart really goes out to the young Swede, 26 years old. Could have made a famous upset here, taking all three championships. The only one that he wasn't eligible for was the Star Trophy. He's not over 50. So there you're looking, if the positions stay as they are, the new 2012 champion, Vitantonio Liuzzi, from the start here. All the cars spread out wide. We knew it was going to be tight into Vivalo, the first set of corners. Somebody at the back going well wide there. Everybody getting through. Johan Christofferson up the inside, in front. And, uh, oh, I don't, don't believe it. It's uh, one of the BMWs and one of the Jaguars having your own fight at the back. As Giovanni Berton's gone off, I think. And who was that with him? Might have been Enzio Muccio. So obviously, the driver behind him, Gigi Ferrara, staying well back, thinking that it might have been oil and he was traipsing around there. It's quite possibly correct as well. Having a look again at Vitantoni Oliuzzi. Still the safety car out there. Gigi Ferrara and Raffaele Gianmaria, first and second. Bacci out of this. That puts Liuzzi up into third place currently. Remember, we're still racing, this still counts. Then it's Mara Cesare, Simone Iacone, Gianni Morbidelli in fourth, Andrea Lurini, sorry, <laughs> Morbidelli in, in seventh rather, uh, Andrea Lurini in eighth, Tom Biaggi in ninth, Christian Fittipaldi tenth, Muccio eleventh, Max Mugelli in twelfth, Tom Schoffler down in thirteenth, and it was Sinny who's come into the pits. I didn't say it's one of the Chevrolet Luminas way back there, and so Francesco Sinny's come into the pits. In fact, the uh, Solaris team. Andrea Bacci, already out of the car. The Solaris team got big plans for superstars. I was chatting with them down there. They said they've even got a third car ready to, well, about to be ready to race. Might even come in Chevrolet Lumina with uh, the Solaris team with three cars next season. Actually, there's been quite a few rumors uh, circulating about what's happening with superstars. Uh, one of the strongest, or one of the most interesting, is that a British team are looking at superstars very, very closely and thinking quite hard about entering a team next year. As to who the British team is, or who it's run by, let alone what drivers it's going to use, nobody knows. But that's a strong rumor at the moment. There's something else to look forward to to Superstars next year. Just one of the many rumours that are circulating. Safety car still out. They'll be out for another lap. That looks like Francesco City is going to come out, but he's a lap down. Number 19, black and orange flag. That's Enzio Muccio. So the uh, Felito Motors Jaguar, which did go off the track, he's still out there. But... Uh, He's got a warning that uh, he'll need to have a look at what he's uh, damaged to the car and maybe pull in. So Muccio we're looking at as uh, Liuzzi again. Right behind here, Mauro Cesare. Absolute, absolute disaster, absolute disaster. And the poor Swede just sitting on the sidelines looking at what's going on and thinking what could have been. Doesn't matter that he's a rookie champion, doesn't matter that he's the Italian champion. He wanted that scalp, a famous scalp to take Tony Oliuzzi. Oliuzzi, it could have been anybody that Nico Calderol had hit, but it had to be the worst person on the track to take out the championship leader. Meanwhile, safety car, don't know if he's coming in next lap around. It depends on how much of that debris they've cleared away from the uh, Nico Calderola's AMG Coupe and the bits of 
Audi RS5, which are still being dragged away here. They're down in the corner, just going off screen. Going Christofferson looking on at what could have been an absolute, not just famous victory, but a stunning victory for a rookie driver in his first year in Superstars. And the camera keeps its eye on Antonio Liuzzi. I did say at the start of this, Antonio's done an entire race without any problems at all, and that included jumping the berms. And what Johan was looking for was maybe a component failure, suspension failure for Antonio Liuzzi. Doesn't matter now. Well, in fact, it could. If we go under racing conditions again, we're under 13 minutes left to race. If somebody pushes hard on Tony Oliuzzi, something could happen. They say it's never over till the fat lady sings. There's Johan Christofferson again, scratching his head. Well, there's nothing you could have done. It was blindsided, came from behind you. Something could happen to Tony Oliuzzi. I would imagine that the pace car could do this one more lap and come in. Antonio will be wanting to stay out of trouble. All he needs to do is circulate. He doesn't actually need to finish in front of anybody, and he will be 2012 champion. But there are people behind him who are still racing. He is in third place. There are other people who will want to get past. There's a Chevrolet Lumina for a start, the second of the Luminas looming in his rear mirror. Simone Iacone, very fast off the start from almost, well, the ninth row of the grid. And also, it can't be Francesco Sini because he will have to go right to the back of the grid. But it is Iacone in fifth place. Lorini behind him as well. We've seen how hard Lorini races. Tom Biaggi don't think will be a threat here. But Iacone and Larini could definitely be a threat to Liuzzi. Liuzzi is going to keep his powder dry. Cesari, I think, will be dismissed once this pace car comes in by Iacone and Larini. They'll want to get past him as soon as possible and go after Liuzzi. And I think that, if we have enough of the race left, that is where the battle will be here. Gigi Ferrara out in front. And look at the debris still on the track. As the pace car goes slowly through there, that's at uh, Pineta, right at the back of the track. They call it, uh, I think the drivers I've heard, the drivers call it Schumacher. And that's one that they try to avoid at all costs and just leap across. Some of the cars can do it. The Roma Racing Mercedes and the Roma, Romeo Ferraris Mercedes, both those two in front, seem to handle it very, very well. Tony Aliuzzi has stayed away from that and you can see that it's been a war on this track. Safety car will come in in this lap. We'll be under racing conditions. Ten minutes left to race here. And it is down to Iacone and Larini to put the squeeze on Tonio Liuzzi for this championship. Ferrara and uh, Raffaele Giammaria out in front. They'll come into Zangaria. Out of this double curve, onto the start finish straight, onto the curve, onto the start finish straight. As they curve around, they'll be under racing conditions. Ferrara putting the pedal to the metal. Raffaele Jamaria will want that as a scalp as well. Tonio Liuzzi behind them trying to stay out of trouble. And guess who's trying first of all up the inside? Yacone on. Oh, Mara Cesare has got past him already. And I told you, Larini will be next along to try and do that. He'll do it almost straight away. That's what he's desperate to do. Can't do it now. Antonio Liuzzi will have Iacone, the fast-starting Iacone, out in front. Uh, well, behind him and trying to get in front of him as well. Ferrara all sideways with the Roma Racing Mercedes. Raffaele Giammaria right in his tracks as well. Up the inside. Oh, that turned so well. Let's have a look at the power down the straight. Has Raffaele Giammaria got it in the tank? He has indeed. Slips in front of Gigi Ferrara. Heartbreaking. That'll flat spot your tyres, but it rides the curve so well. There's that Romeo Ferraris, Mercedes. Gigi Ferrara losing time through there. Liuzzi now will soon be under threat from Iacone. Yeah, Koenig's next along, and guess what? Lorini's got past. No, he's still. Yes, he has. Lorini's got past. He's behind Yakone, and now the squeeze comes on Tony Oliuzzi. He's eight and three quarter minutes left to go here. Tom Biaggi behind Mauro Cesare at the moment will want that scalp as well. Now, what can Liuzzi do? Will he just move aside and let the fighting 
with Lorini and Iacone go past him? Or will they squeeze him? It's always a scalp, good scalp to have. Ferrara now in second place. Raffaele Giammaria out in front. Under investigation, it says, and I think that might be for jumping the curbs. Although the car does it very well, he had to stay on the track. There's Tom Biaggi right behind Mauro Cesare now. And Iacone closing up on Liuzzi for third place. Oh, Ferrara up the inside. Oh, brilliant move. How did he do that? And where did that move start? Gian Maria getting a little bit of a slide. Had a taste of his own medicine there. As a Romeo Ferrari's Mercedes locks its front. Gian Maria right behind him. Liuzzi at the moment out of trouble. Not getting involved in this battle. Is it tyre smoke or is it concrete dust? We don't know yet. And Iacone starting to close on Liuzzi, but this battle at the front, oh, this is for a win. Desperate for these. Jamaria wants two in the bag from this. Starting on the fourth row of the grid, I remind you, the winner from race one will want to take it away from Shiji Ferrara. But Shiji, as cool as a cucumber, knows these cars very well, won a championship with them. And will want to win again and keep Rafael Jamaria behind him so far. He's been doing it. Liuzzi, keep your eye on Liuzzi. Yeah, Coney's right with him now. Right in his wheel tracks, right in his slipstream with the lights on. And Larini's after him as well. Larini's just being dropped a little bit. Liuzzi doesn't want to be the meat in these two battles. You could be paced if you get between these two battles that are going on at the moment. Jamari and Ferrara in first and second. Yacconi and Larini in fourth and fifth. And once again, Tom Biaggi is a meat in a different kind of sandwich. Gets past, though, and keeps it on track as well. Tom Biaggi, let's hope the leaves don't mean that he's going to overheat and have another blown engine in the BMWs. They've had to have a whole shed load of engines brought over to put into these cars. Raffaele Jamaria in second place. Oh, he locked again. That's Ferrara locking the wheel. And Liuzzi still out of trouble, still with a gap between second to him and between him and fourth place. Iacone not hanging around, but I think Larini's starting to push hard now. Iacone all on a twitch under brakes. Dust comes up, it's just over five minutes left of racing. Liuzzi still not under threat, he's still safe. He can still, if he stays there, win this championship. Even if he finishes the race, he'll win the championship. Doesn't need to get involved in a battle, but he could be a big, pasty bit in the middle of two slices of bread, two slices of Mercedes bread, if he's not careful. Liuzzi leaps the curves. He's been doing that for the whole race. Oh, look at this. Iacone's right on him now. And so is Lorini. Iacone drives up the inside. He's a little bit of a tag there. Some bit of bodywork, I think, has fallen off of Liuzzi's car as Iacone just rubs the back of him. Lorini's with him as well. Liuzzi keeps the power down, just stretched a little bit over the Chevy Lumina. Chevy Lumina seeming to do very well in the corners as Iacone. And then Liuzzi just pulls it away. Big displacement, the 6.2 litre Mercedes pulls away from him over the curves. There's a little bit of a rub we saw from a different side. And I think just a tiny little bit of the car racing Mercedes spat underneath the Chevrolet Lumina. And all together again, Liuzzi, maybe a war of a thousand rubs here. As they'll try to. Iacone will try to cut him against Lorini's on the Iacone. Iacone's concentrating too much, doesn't get the power down. And Lorini goes past him now, Lorini. We've seen how hard Lorini races on here as Liuzzi's wing mirrors are filled with Lorini now. And he's known throughout the season what Lorini has been like on the track. Takes no prisoners, does Lorini. Almost as much of a bulldog as Max Bigley. And more dust as they go through the concrete. Liuzzi now under threat from Lorini. Just under four minutes left of racing. Lorini doesn't want this. He hasn't had to put up with too much so far, just a rub from Iacone. And meanwhile, Jamaria is out in front, Ferrari in second place. We, saw, we didn't see the, uh, what happened there. Oh, Lorini, that, Liuzzi sideways. And Lorini back in, to, uh, in, in as well. Can Liuzzi get started? Will he select reverse gear and get out of that? 
because Leuzzi does need to get started again. Lorini's just parked it in front of him. What is Leuzzi going to do? Both of them are out of it. The Carl Racing Mercedes stuck in the gravel. You couldn't make it up. You couldn't invent this. Johan Christofferson taken out by Nico Calderola. And now I did say that Lorini is a bit of trouble on the track. Leucy's got going again, but he's got damaged bodywork. He needs to finish this race. Three minutes and one second left on this, but he's been able to get it out of the gravel. He just needs to finish this race. Bits of bodywork flying off. That's a dangerous car. The whole front of the car is starting to tear apart now, but he's still going. The UC is still going. The car racing Mercedes could make it to the end of this race. Two minutes, 38 seconds left. Has he got any kind of control? There's coolant coming out of the front of that car as well. The car shouldn't be running. It will be overheating. The radiator is going to empty on that. Look at that. Under braking goes left, right. Misses the corner. Can't turn the car. Parks it in front of Antonio Liuzzi's car racing Mercedes. Both Mercedes into the gravel. Liuzzi trying to select reverse and get away from that. The car racing team are thinking, what's going on here? Leucci still, last we saw, circulating around. And Johan Christofferson's looking at this with wonder on his face. Coolant pouring out of the front of Leucci's Mercedes. Can that big 6.2 litre engine with less than the required amount of coolant in it keep going? If he goes slow, and look at that coolant still spraying out of the front of that. He's coming into the pits. Leucci into the pits. What will happen at the end of this race? Jan Maria, fastest lap of the race, 145.076. It doesn't really matter. Ferrara's well back behind him, over a second behind him and more. Yacone in third place. Tom Biaggi's into fourth now. Christian Finipaldi up to fifth. Mero Cesare into sixth. Max Mugelli seventh. It doesn't really matter. What happens at the end of this race? Is Liuzzi credited with a finish? Will he be credited with a finish for this race? Leucci into the pits. The team seem to think that he will have this championship at the end of the day. 55 seconds left to race, but there'll be an extra lap after that. Has he completed enough race distance? The team think he has. The team say Vitantonio Leucci is a 2012 champion. He managed to get it started, brought it back to the pits, and has done the required race distance. I think, to retain his championship lead. Well, I'll put my hands up here. I need some officials to come in and tell me, will he have the championship after this? Will he retain the championship? Tom Schoffler, and I think even he's come up to congratulate Liuzzi. Nine seconds, eight seconds left of this race, plus one more lap. We're still seeing battles go on around the track, but more car, I think, is left in bits on the track that will finish this race. Gian Maria still out in front, Ferrari in second place. Giacone eight seconds down on the leader in third place. You're looking at the fight with Muccio. I think it was Muccio in front of. Well, it doesn't really matter. The race is going to be finished now, unless something else happens here. This is Muccio and Lorini. No, it doesn't, no, it's not Lorini, of course it's not. It's Raffaele Gianmaria going past him and lapping him. That's what it is. Whew. Trying to keep it all together in your head, Raffaele Gianmaria. And one more lap to go. That's it. This is the final lap. So Muccio has been lapped by Raffaele Gianmaria. The Felito Motors Jaguar gets out of the way. Number 54, number 99 to the stewards after the race. Well, I'm not surprised at that. Lorini has to explain his actions. But also, so does Vitantonio Liuzzi. Well, final lap for Raffaele Gianmaria. Ferrara wasn't able to do about him, do anything about him. Romeo Ferraris will go away from this track with a famous double win.
That's if no suspension failure in the last half of the lap for Raffaele Jamaria as the car leaps daintily over the curbs. And the, the Folito Motors Jaguar makes a little bit more heavy work of it. Round the back of the track now on the final lap for Raffaele Jamaria. I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive, there will be various protests after this race. But even with Thomas Schoffler in congratulating with Antonio Liuzzi, I think that means it's all over for the championship. But who knows, stewards might have a different interpretation of things. Coming up to the final set of corners now at uh, Zangaria. Raffaele Jamaria. Out of the final complex onto the curve. They'll take him onto the start finish straight. A double race win for Romeo Ferraris. Raffaele Jamaria takes two in a row and still they're battling. That's Iacone and I think Tom Biaggi. Iacone for third place. Takes that from Tom Biaggi. Tom Biaggi, a final fling at the last. Iacone goes through. I don't think they're even thinking about where the track is going. This is so off-road, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody was anywhere close to the track. With Antonio Liuzzi, all smiles. And a totally different visage for Johan Christofferson as they cross the line. Tom Biaggi, a good fourth place for that. Christian Fittipaldi comes home in fifth. Max Mugelli in sixth. But let me take my breath and say it's got to be Vitantonio Liuzzi's championship for this one. Raffaele Giammaria, the winner of the race. But every race I say it, can you get more of a spectacle than superstars? Race one was phenomenal and epic. Race two, well, this is Ben Hur writ large in V8, Johan Christofferson, International Superstar Series champion. Johan Christofferson has just come up as International Superstars Series champion. That is official, that's the flash that's just come on my screen. It looks like Tony Oliusi doesn't have this. And that Johan Christofferson is the 2012 champion. It's up and down, it's left and right. Retired, Morbidelli, Bacci, Thomas Schoffler, Francesco Sini, Polara, Burton, Calderola, Christofferson retired, but with, with Liuzzi having a pit in and stopping in the pits, the flash came up on the screen that Johan Christofferson was 2012 International Superstars Champion. Italian champion, rookie champion. There it is, 185 plays 181. That's official. Johan Christofferson, the rookie, is the rookie champion, the Italian champion, and the international champion. If he was 50, he'd be star champion as well. Absolutely brilliant, and it goes from the lowest of the low Just had word in my ear, Audi, Mercedes and BMW looks like the team's championships at the moment Audi, let me write that down, Mercedes, BMW and BMW so close, look at that crash you couldn't have had, had a worse crash. And Johan Christofferson holds his head in disbelief as Nico Calderola takes him out. And then Andrea Larini cuts across the nose of Vita Antonio Liuzzi, parks it in the gravel, damages the front of Tony Liuzzi, who sheds bodywork, manages to select reverse, carries on the engine still running, bodywork falling off of that, coolant coming out. And Larini looks on in amazement that Liuzzi could carry on, but Coolen coming out of that, it is an official retirement then. And Johan Christofferson 
the team seem to think that he's done enough to become champion. What would have happened if Tony Oliuzzi could have carried on for yet another lap? But I don't think he would have been allowed to with Coolant coming out of there. The team seemed to think he was the champion there and then. And Johan Christofferson, six, he says. As the winners come in, and poor old Gianmarino and Raffaelli stuck at the back of this as they push Gigi Ferrara out of the way. I'm sure there will be a full rundown of the ins and outs of this on all of the bulletin boards, on all of the forums, a little bit later on. Great race from Raffaele Gianmaria. Don't take anything away from him. He showed his class in GT Sprint, came over to Superstars, and it's a double race victory. Brilliant for him. On a track that naturally suits the big power of the Mercedes and also beautifully set up and he gets uh, congratulated by his former teammates in the black team Ferrari in GT Sprint Andrea Palma he's in congratulations Roberto Ficini there trying to move him into a nice place for a picture as usual Romeo Ferrari is a wonderful double victory and the teams work out a little voice in my head said Audi from Mercedes from BMW and those failures to finish in the first race plus their dismal showing unfortunate for them in race two meant that Audi had overtaken them and Mercedes in the points championship for the manufacturers and the teams and Audi will take the championship away. They've got the full set. There's Gigi Ferrara just pointing over. A look at Gigi. There's Raffaele Jamaria post analysing his performance. Well, start the discussion now. But officially, it's Johan Christofferson. Basically, Audi have got the full set. Johan Christofferson, Swedish touring car champion as well this season. And I think there's another series, uh, another series over there in Sweden that he's won also this year. And now international superstar series champion rookie champion, Italian champion for 2012. And, oh, I would love to be down there just listening to the what's going on at the moment, but it was official. The flash did come up, and yet the team seemed to think it was a victory for Tony Oliuzzi and that the Carl Racing Mercedes would have this championship. What a scout for Johan Christofferson to walk all the way back from uh, Pignetta or Schumacher Corner, as they call it, basically two kilometers away from pit lane. Tom Schoffler up there in the red and white race suit with the cameras on him, talking to Will Greit, one of the uh, organizing, one of the organization and Shiji Ferrara sideways on with a back to the camera and talking to Jamaria is Andrea Palma. And Jamaria partnered Andrea Palma in the Team Black Ferrari team. Palma, of course, GT Sprint Champion 2012. In fact, he took that title with nine race victories and two rounds in hand. So there you've got it. Yes, the standings have come up on my monitor as well. Christofferson, 184 points, finishes four points in front of Tony Oliuzzi with Tom Biaggi 
in third. Gianni Morbidelli in fourth place. Gianni, and there's Christofferson walking through. I don't think he can believe it. He's starting to feel congratulations now. And very stoic, been, being led away. To face all oh, the best music of all. A horrible thing to happen. Just a couple of laps into the race. And then it all came good at the end. I did say that Larini, you really had to watch out for him. Here's the highlights.